Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start with the story. A ITA for meeting my father after he stole my brother's wife. I, 27 am, have two siblings, my sister Cass, 30 f, and my brother Mark, 30 twam. Our parents divorced when I was 10, and we split our time between them. Cass was always closer to our dad, and she has always disliked Mark, making claims about him that are hard to believe. Despite this, she has always loved me. Five years ago, we found out that Mark's wife Jane was cheating on him with our father. This caused chaos in our family. Cass sided with our dad, Mark moved in with our mom and I sided with him. Even though I sided with Mark, I've always kept in contact with Cass, and Mark is okay with that. I didn't see my dad again until this Friday, when he and Jane dropped Cass off at our mom's for Mother's Day. I was outside walking home, and my dad noticed me. For some reason I agreed to have coffee with them. It was a tense conversation, and I confirmed that he wouldn't be invited to my wedding, and that I didn't know if I wanted to get to know his and Jane's kids. He even told me I did the right thing choosing Mark. It was weird, but he dropped me off after about half an hour. Mark saw him from the window and has been cold and snippy with me since then. Mark had a meltdown, ranting at mom for not caring more about what our dad did to his life, than at Cass for always halfway associating with him just for mom's sake. Then he kicked me in the stomach, and I literally fell through a table like it was WWE. Cass said his behavior is why Jane left him and called the cops on him. I feel the worst for our mom because she just wanted a good Mother's Day, and our issues ruined her weekend. I went to the hospital because Cass begged me to. I'm perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with me, I didn't press charges on Mark because I feel bad for him. Life has dealt him a pretty garbage hand, and there's no point in making things worse. Mark moved out, and I don't know where he is now. He only talked to our mom before he left, and she hasn't told me what it was about. Mom Cass and I had a big conversation and Cass admitted that she doesn't love or like Mark. She brought up incidents from when they were teenagers and said she doesn't trust him. She admitted she only associated with him for mom's sake, and is glad that Jane is with our dad. That was rough to hear, and it made our mom cry a lot. Cass made it clear she won't stop seeing our dad and Jane. She wants me to get to know our little siblings but won't force me and will understand if I never do. I felt like I had to post this because I needed to vent. I wish there was a resolution to all this, that we could be a family again. But I'm angry and frustrated that there is none, and it seems like there never will be. Update? Mark has pretty much gone off the deep end. Last week, he messaged our mom to clear out his room because he's not coming back and to throw everything away. While doing this, Cass found a USB in his closet. It had a bunch of photos of her on it. Nothing inappropriate but it made Cass break down and she spent time in the hospital psych ward. She got out a few days ago. I talked to her but haven't seen her because our dad picked her up and she stayed with him. On Sunday, she posted on Instagram, praising our dad and Jane, mocking Mark and saying awful things about him. That somehow reached Mark and he came crashing home, drunk, driving his Prius into my truck. Thankfully, I was with my fiancé's family. According to mom, he demanded to see me to kick my ass, blaming me for everything. I kind of do too. Everything was mostly fine until I got in that car with my dad. Now, everyone's spiraling, even me a little bit. I mostly just feel bad for our mom, because this has her feeling so down and awful. Update 2 My account was deleted again. I don't know why. This might be my last update, but I'm venting. About three weeks ago, Mark was arrested for assaulting Cass. He went to her place, saying he wanted to apologize and talk about the pictures, and then he assaulted her. He called the cops on himself. I don't know why she let him in without someone else there. When the cops came, he was drunk and forcing her to spoon with him on the floor, ranting that they belonged together. She wasn't moving or talking until our dad came, and then she got back to normal. Just the thought makes me want to throw up and punch something. Cass was in the hospital for a week. She didn't want to stay longer and screamed until they let me take her. She stayed with our dad, acting like a little girl around him, calling him Dada and Daddy. She visits me and my fiancé almost every day. 
She knows how upset I am and tells me it's not my job to protect her, that she's my older sister and it's her job to protect me. She says I did nothing wrong, and that by being there for her now, I'm doing all I can. I feel like she should hate me because maybe if I'd asked her to stay with me after Mark drove drunk or hit me, things would have been different. But whenever she sees me, she's looking out for me. I've offered to let her stay with me and my fiancé, but she wants to stay with our dad because she feels he can protect her. I didn't, and I'm why this even happened. I don't really feel bad for my mom anymore. She's visited Mark a lot, and feels like there must be a way he's innocent. Cass told me to give mom time and think about how hard it must be for her, but I feel ashamed she said that. I know mom just doesn't want to believe Mark did what he did, but he did. People have been asking how Cass saved my life and my fiancé's. For me, she donated bone marrow. For my fiancé, she tackled her out of the way of a speeding car. And this is the person I couldn't protect. I guess everyone who called me spineless, and an enabler was right. WAP Day 3 A few days after the last update, Cass visited me again. This time she seemed even more fragile than before. She looked at me with those big, sad eyes and told me that she was struggling to understand why everything had to be so hard. She asked if she was a bad person for siding with our dad, for loving him despite everything. I didn't know what to say. I told her that love is complicated and that none of this was her fault. She stayed with us that night, not wanting to go back to our dad's place. It was the first time in a long while that we had a peaceful night together, just watching TV and reminiscing about the good old days. It felt like a small glimmer of hope amidst all the chaos. The next morning, Cass received a call from our dad. I could see the tension in her face as she spoke to him. She told him she needed some space and that she was staying with me for a while. He didn't take it well, but she stood her ground. I was proud of her for that. That afternoon, we received a call from the police. Mark had been found. He was in a bad state, drunk and disoriented. They had taken him to the hospital, and he was asking for our mom. When she arrived, he broke down, confessing that he didn't know how to fix anything, that he felt like he had lost everything. It was heartbreaking to hear. Mom called us from the hospital, her voice trembling as she recounted Mark's words. Cass and I rushed over, wanting to be there for our brother despite everything. When we arrived, Mark looked up at us with tears in his eyes. For a moment, it felt like we were a family again united in our pain and confusion. Mark was admitted to a rehab center shortly after that. It was a tough decision, but we all knew it was necessary. Cass and I visited him regularly, slowly trying to rebuild our relationship with him. It wasn't easy, but we were making progress. Throughout all of this, our dad tried to reach out, but Cass was firm in keeping her distance. She needed time to heal, to understand her own feelings without his influence. I supported her decision, knowing that it was what she needed. Months passed, and slowly, things began to improve. Cass found a therapist who helped her work through her issues, and Mark started to make strides in his recovery. Our mom, though still struggling, was finding solace in seeing her children slowly coming back together. One day, Cass and I were sitting in the park, talking about everything that had happened. She looked at me and said, Maybe we can't change the past, but we can try to build a better future. I nodded, knowing she was right. It's been a long, difficult journey, but we're still here, still fighting to find our way back to each other. There's no easy fix, no magic solution, but there's hope. And sometimes, that's enough.